let us venture into the realm of the most vital profession, the realm of teaching. Yet this realm, I'm afraid, is fraught with perils and pitfalls, an intricate labyrinth where our guiding lights find themselves lost and delusioned. Imagine, if you will, our teachers as the conductors of a symphony, an orchestra of young, curious minds. Their task? To create a harmony of knowledge, a melody of critical thought. Yet they find themselves not with baton in hand, but buried under a mountain of paperwork, their music drowned out by a cacophony of administrative duties. The saga continues, my friend, with a farcical twist. Our conductors, our teachers, are compensated with a mere pittance for their Herculean efforts. Even more absurd, they plunge into their own pockets to provide for their students a better equipped class as if they are expected to fund their own orchestras, to purchase their own instruments to be used in lessons. From the sidelines, a chorus of critics, parents, and policymakers drown out the melody with their discordant notes. The parents, armed with the baton of entitlement, attempt to conduct from the sidelines. The policymakers, infatuated with numbers, reduce the symphony to a cold mathematical equation. In this grand theater of the absurd, absurd solutions are proposed. Pay the conductors more, they say, and the symphony will improve, as if a richer conductor automatically produces a better orchestra. This simplistic equation disregards the artistry of teaching, reducing it to a transaction. Another comedic proposal is the rallying cry of all hands on deck approach, meaning that with the participation of all stakeholders, we can make the school a better place for education. Yet it is akin to asking the orchestra to play louder on a sinking ship, because it ignores the water flooding in the very structure of the ship, the schooling system that is fundamentally flawed. Our conductors, thus, trapped in a Sisyphean struggle, striving to create a symphony in a concert hall that is crumbling. Their noble aspiration to create music is usurped by the harsh realities of a system that views them as mere functionaries. In this tragic comedy, our teachers lose their individuality, their creativity. They are forced to follow a script, a standard, a one-size-fits-all score that stifles the unique music each teacher and student brings. Then there is the dance with the ever-changing educational reforms, a dizzying waltz that leaves our conductors breathless, trying to keep pace with the rhythm that is constantly shifting. On the top of that, the demands of schooling systems spill over into personal lives of teachers. The boundaries blur, leaving the conductors juggling struggling and inevitably stumbling. And people wonder why teachers quit the profession.